Welcome back, 643. Now, the battle for Iwo Jima was still raging 75 years ago today. And this morning, we hear from a veteran's voice that was right in the middle of it. Augie Flores enlisted in the Marine Corps in September of 1941, three months before Pearl Harbor. And his sense of duty would eventually drop him on the volcanic ash beaches of Iwo Jima in a fight he saw through to the end. I was a little bit of a rebel, you know. Augustine Augie Flores was born in 1924 and went from having it all to losing both parents before his 10th birthday. I went from having anything I wanted to eat to having nothing to eat. And when I say nothing, I mean absolutely nothing. He lived with his older sister and various other families around town. Augie attended Kern Union High School, now BHS, when he and some friends signed up for duty. With the mistake of going downtown, I was disappointed with high school. And me and several other guys, I can't remember the names now, but all, all of us got stuck that day. We signed up. Flores went to Marine Boot Camp in San Diego, but was back in Bakersfield when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. His first assignment was in the Kwajalein Atoll on the island of Roy Namur. The 23rd Marines took Roy Namur, which was a landing strip where we took an island, we secured it, somebody else came in and, uh, you know, took it over. From there, his division headed to Saipan. Well, it was bad news. <laughs> It was hard. His unit landed on the beach as battleships pounded the area. Flores says he was able to reach the tree line when he was shot. Now, leading my guys, and uh, all of a sudden, my rifle flew out of my hand, and I fell to the ground, and I got two holes in this arm. Augie was wounded, lying in the midst of other Marines who were either killed or injured. Captain London, not my captain, but he recognized me. He says, how are you doing, Flores? I said, I'm okay. He said, you need some morphine? I said because he's the only one who could give me morphine. And I said, no, save it for somebody who might need it later on, you know. He was waiting to help another Marine get back to the beach when he was hit in the back by shrapnel. Like right next to my spine, right through my, my canteen. And, uh, so oh, this, is, this is after you got shot in the arm? After I got shot in the back? Yeah. yeah. Do you think your canteen saved your life? Yeah. Augie was shipped back to Hawaii, and while he recovered, he was given the option to go home. Wait, you had the chance to go home? Yeah. But you well, kept... I didn't want to go home. I want to be with the guys I was trained with, you know. And that decision would land him on the beach at Iwo Jima. The beach is just sand, black sand, you know, and you have to crawl like from here to the top of the window, you know. The guys all over the place. Augie still remembers that battle and his friends that fought beside him. Not just their names, but their nicknames. They called him the Great AJ. That brings him a moment of laughter and tears. What was your nickname? The Great AJ. The Great AJ. Great AJ. Mooney from Philadelphia name. Put that, put that on me. For five weeks, Flores said death stalked him and the other Marines on that island. You could get shot in the back. You could walk right by the guys that shot you and not know us. Never see him. Never saw him. Near the end of the fighting, Augie says a moment of carelessness nearly cost him his life when he spotted a Japanese soldier hiding under a truck. He grabbed a grenade. He was going to hit a the grenade. He had to tap him. Yeah, tap. He tapped, and he tapped it on, on the axle. And he blew his head up, but he missed me. When it was over, the survivors gathered on the beach to rest for the first time. Well, the beach, we uh, used our helmets to take a bath, took our clothes off, piled them up, and somebody set them on fire. Or we were naked there on the beach, you know. Couldn't care less, you know. You uh, had those clothes on for a month. <laughs> yeah, you could tell. Didn't you? <laughs> In fact, when the American flag was raised on Mount Suribachi early on, Augie said it wasn't that big of a deal. When somebody said the flag went up, I couldn't care less, you know, if the flag was up or not. Didn't matter to me. Not at that point. He posed for a picture in front of the Marines Memorial during his honor flight trip in April of 2017. It was a time he could truly appreciate that snapshot in history and the emotion that it awakened. I fell apart. I just lost it. I couldn't even talk. You know, it's easy to try to reminisce sometimes. No, not easy, but I mean, there's a lot of things that come to mind that you can't plan for any of that stuff. It just happens to you and you. And your brain takes over. 
Six months later, Augie suffered a severe stroke and had to move in with his daughter's family. Many of his mementos came along, including a box of medals and pictures from his time as a BPD officer and a career in the county probation department. Not to mention 65 years of marriage to his wife, Ruth, who passed away in 2016. You know, I'm like, I'm really grateful to God for the blessings I've had. Incredible blessings, you know. Why would anybody want to call me the great AJ? I didn't do anything. It's just really, really uh, gratifying to have people recognize you. All memories this 96-year-old cherishes with plenty of time to make some more. And we want to tell your veteran's story. You can send us information on someone who served. Include their name, a picture, some basic information, and we will uh, talk to them. Send us your nominations to Mike at KERO.com.